Hey, this is Frank Raddus, and we're here at the Red Touch Media Experience, and I'm talking to Brian Balthazar, pop culture correspondent. So what's going on here at MIPCOM that's in the pop cultural phenomenon? Well, it's so interesting. We all think about our own little bubble. You know, maybe, you know, where I live, everyone's talking about Miley Cyrus, but somewhere else there's some, some other big pop culture equivalent, you know. So coming to Cannes and seeing all the creative energy that's here and just how one show is huge somewhere else and could be the next big thing here. You see, you know, the, the, play, the country that started The Voice, you know, before before everyone in the U.S. knew what The Voice was, it was big somewhere else. So it's really interesting to get a sense of what resonates from a pop culture and understand, entertainment standpoint right here. Did you see any of the stars coming and going last night at the big party? I didn't. I didn't see. But you know what I did just see is this guy who is a dead ringer for Justin Timberlake. And there was a, a photographer following him around. And they're going, Justin, Justin. And I bought it. I bought it for a split second. But then he started dancing. And he danced towards the camera. And I was like, did, would Justin dance for the camera? It's actually to promote a show. I think the show is called Your Face Looks Familiar. Yeah, he had a sign that said familiar face or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and he was, he so. would turn his because honestly... I got cooked last night, too. I saw him and I went, oh, my God, Justin Timberlake, what's he doing here? Yeah, so it is interesting. There are all these clever stunts that people are, are you know, doing to get attention because there's so many booths, so many ideas, so many shows that you do what you have to to kind of resonate. So what's going on right now in the uh, sort of in the pop culture media? What's happening out there right now that's got your attention? Well, you know, I think... Certainly, pop music is. Uh, television has never been bigger than it is right now, as far as compared to the movies. I think everyone's talking about series television and what's where all the Hollywood writers used to write great dramas for movies. Now they're all moving over to TV because that's where they're getting the chance to nurture those storylines. Pop culture, you can't deny the fact that Miley Cyrus, whether we like it or not, is is resonating with people and she's reaping the reward, whether people like what she does or what she, you know, or they don't. They're talking about it. And then, of course, the fact that now, because of the internet and because of video online, anyone can become a celebrity overnight, truly. Um, it's a matter of how long that celebrity will last. You know, they're trying to keep that going. But the truth is, now more than ever, everyone can have a shot at being kind of a, a sensation of some sort. How do you, as a correspondent doing pop culture, determine that you want to go at after one of these sort of overnight celebrities? And, and, and then how much of it is sort of uh, enhanced by your covering that person. Oh, definitely enhanced by being covered. And it's interesting because there was a, uh, uh, I think it's like, say, remember the double rainbow all the way guy. You know, there's always those vi videos that go viral and then you wonder, you know, I want to get an interview with that person. And some of them get so overwhelmed that they can't do them all. But they really need to strike while the iron is hot. I think that's the rule of thumb for someone who's viral at a given moment. Jump on it and ride the way for as long as you can because you may not get that request two weeks later. Hard to interview all the cats that are really popular out there. But of course, <laughs> then there's, but there's the guy who does Henri, Le Chat Noir. Yeah, I mean, I think the internet is sustained on cats alone. But um, yeah, there's certainly... Uh, I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> no, no, it's tough because, look, as a, being a cat guy, I... <laughs> You're a cat guy. Well, that is interesting. People love... I'm always fascinated by what makes something spike online. And I think the, rea the reality is it's something that you're going to get a visceral reaction to. Because most of the time, you're staring at your computer like this. So if a video makes you laugh, makes you mad, makes you smile even, or, or cry, or makes you emotional, then you might share it. It really is all about sharing, you know? Like, if you just watch something by yourself, did it really, it's like a tree falling in the woods. Did it really happen? It's all about whether you're going to share that video, and, that, and that's what... You know, that's, amazing, that's an interesting thing. I mean, you, the, you, right off the top of the bat, you talked about the power of television. Yeah. And, and how it draws in so much of the Hollywood talent that's now. So whether it's writers or producers and, or even the actors, which are now starting to d do more and more television, which mm -hmm. this time 10 years ago right. they would not have done. Right. They would have looked yeah. at it and said, oh, that's TV, I don't right. do that. But now the Internet and the power of the Internet and certainly all of digital content distribution mm -hmm. seems to be overtaking, overwhelming, yeah. cord cutting. Yeah, well, it's interesting because there's a, a bunch of companies here that are really about finding the right digital content for their shows. Because I think every TV show recognizes that you can't just be a TV show anymore. You have to have more available online because people are more and more people are watching their shows online than ever. You know, there's more and more of that viewership. It used to be that the next day after a show aired, you look at the ratings and that was it. But now it's like, 
well, there's the, the rating plus three, three days of DVR usage. And then they're trying to figure out how do they make the most out of those people who don't even own a TV but are still getting their TV shows online or on their iPads. And so they also want to supplement all that content with more because people want more. Yeah. yeah. If the things they love, just keep giving them more of what they love and, and you build that audience and you build that loyalty. And I think now more than ever in this competitive market, you have to really bring as much as you, uh, ro as robust an experience and a robust and entertainment experience as possible. Thank you very much. Brian Balthazar, pop culture correspondent. This is Frank Raddus, the Red Touch Media Experience. See you next time. <laughs>